Hello, everyone. I am Father Raymond Collins. I am a Redemptorist speaking to you from the chapel at St. Alphonse's Villa in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Welcome to my Gospel Reflection for the 14th Sunday of our church year. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with a holy joy, for on those you have rescued from the slavery of sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They began to say, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. So amazed was he at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Regarded by many as the most significant and powerful words in American history, our Declaration of Independence reads, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness self-evident truths. In today's language, self-evident means a no-brainer. We have been granted these self-evident truths by God, not by the Congress, not by the Supreme Court, not by the President. And therefore, there is no argument that we pursue these truths in freedom for ourselves and others. Had he been asked, I believe that Jesus would have been a signer to the Declaration of Independence. These inalienable rights are confirmed by Jesus in his own words in the scriptures. He preached, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Or as in our gospel verse for today, the spirit of the Lord has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives, to set the oppressed free. And so in today's gospel, Jesus comes to his hometown for that same purpose, to bring freedom to those who are oppressed and who at the same time would possess that openness of spirit to receive the truth and freedom that Jesus offers them. What is the barrier in the synagogue on this day for the people? They are refusing to hear the truth from someone they are very well acquainted with. He can't possibly have this wisdom. He's just one of us. He's Mary's son. He's the son of the carpenter. And what does the gospel say to those reactions? It says Jesus was not able to perform any mighty deed there. So amazed was he at their lack of faith. But their unbelief that day is not harmless. It leads to distrust, and that distrust hinders Jesus. 
Were his townspeople too familiar with Jesus? Did they take him for granted as the son of Mary and the son of the carpenter? Is there a chance that we are taking too much for granted from God in our personal lives? Is there a chance that we are taking too much for granted as a country? Circumstances of recent years demonstrate how fragile we are as a church, as a country, and as part of the larger world. Jesus' townspeople are restrained by what they think they know or don't know, and they so move to reject him as something new and different. We don't want that here. So Jesus remarks then that a prophet or a special person is not accepted at home where people think they know him well. Their familiarity actually becomes an obstacle. The inability of Jesus' townsfolk actually make them less free. They keep truth at a distance. My friends, independence and freedom are so precious to the human heart, and yet we live constantly under the oppression of what can appear as freedom. For example, in more recent times, many of our citizens have declared them knowledgeable about the amendments to the Constitution, another cherished document in our history. And they look to the Constitution as to how an amendment here or there can benefit me, oftentimes without regard for the common good. We are blessed with gifts by God to be a blessing for others. Our gifts are meant to be shared. One senator has recently introduced the Freedom to Fly Act, which prohibits airline security from demanding proof of vaccination for the COVID-19 virus. Might we have a right to ask, what about the freedom of those who have been vaccinated and are still concerned about contracting a virus or a disease? So when many of these declarations by those in politics or not, freedom is seen as something related to the individual and often to the exclusion of everyone else. Do we ascribe to we the people or do we ascribe to me first? Yes, we have been given freedom and there will be many speeches and homilies this weekend about the meaning of freedom. And there will, will be a different spin for each one. But if we are to be truly free as individuals and as a nation, we must begin at the source of our freedom, who is our God. We are called to respect these same inalienable rights in all other human beings. If we are to be free as children of God, we have to realize that freedom is something we have to work at for the duration of our lives. Freedom has much to do with growing up and with maturity, a constant working toward the persons God wants each one of us to be. God has given us all we have to be a blessing for others. Do we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal and endowed by their creator? This is what our country's Declaration of Independence said in 1776, and that has not changed. All are created equal, not just those who speak like me, who look like me or live in the same neighborhood as I do. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If we are open to the Lord's gift of the spirit, we will never be obstacles to our own or another's freedom toward pursuing these inalienable rights. Dependence on God, my brothers and sisters, means freedom to love, freedom to seek the truth at all times, in all places. 
a fitting response on this day in our country would be for each of us to renew our commitments to protect and promote the self-evident truths of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for ourselves and all of God's people. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And so we ask our God for the grace to help us seek the truth and to live in freedom for all. God's word in the scriptures should always be any Christian starting place for living self-evident truths of life. Amen. Let us pray. God of justice, Father of truth, who guide creation and wisdom and goodness to fulfillment in Christ your Son, open our hearts to the truth of his gospel, that your peace may rule in our hearts and your justice may guide our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for joining the Redemptorist online preaching today. We hope you will join us again next Wednesday, July 7th. Father Jerry Knapp will be preaching.